You know, we are back in the Harvey Norman Lounge and in travel today. Debbie has been on the road, or rather, should I say, she's been in the air visiting our city of first Dunedin. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, first university, first newspaper, first female lawyer, first medical and dental clinics. The city's got a lot of history. <gasps> yeah, but if you leave the city and you go just outside of it, there's some really great wildlife as well. Take a look. Just a 20 minute drive from our seventh biggest city will get you to a special ecosystem that is home to some of our most rare and endangered species and New Zealand's only castle. There are plenty of places to stop and take in this amazing view of Otago Harbour before reaching Larnak Castle. Owner Margaret Barker took on the challenge of renovating this dilapidated property 50 years ago. It was a big job, but of course it was a bigger job than we realised. And well, 50 years on and it's still going on, but um, the water was pouring in, the roof was um, leaking and the ceilings on the top two floors were down. The castle now attracts well over 100,000 visitors each year. The 14 acres of grounds rated as one of New Zealand's gardens of international significance. I do like flowers, I do like my old fashioned border and that's because it morphs and, and changes um, daily. <laughs> it sort of explodes here and collapses there and, um, and the South Sea gardens an escape. You know, it can go down there and the, climate's different. Further up the peninsula, Neil runs tours on the water, where you can get a different perspective on the wildlife. So albatross, um, New Zealand fur seals breeding on the rocks around the headland, um, shags of three different kinds. Um, you never know what else, sometimes there are sea lions on the sandy beaches. And then out at sea, um, there'll be a variety of seabirds, other species of albatross that come from our sub-Antarctic islands. Yeah, it's really different once you get out to sea. Um, always from a car or walking around, you're on the land, you're looking at the sea. But it's another world. You just go through the entrance to the harbour and you're out, you're close to the water, you're in the waves, you're in the wind. And, those, and you're in the element of those birds, the albatross, if it's windy enough, will come soaring right by you and suddenly you realise you're really little in a very big ocean. This is the only northern royal albatross colony on the mainland. We estimate we have got a couple of hundred adults that are regularly here on the headland. Albatross pretty much are gliders, so they move around through a thing called dynamic soaring, where they pretty much lock their wings in place, and these birds here have a two metre wingspan. So if I've seen lock the place, they can fly from here to Chile, which is about nine and a half thousand kilometres in uh, just over a couple of weeks. My office down here, down the hill, if I happen to notice an albatross out the window even now after being born and bred on the Tango Peninsula, I still get distracted from what I'm doing. At the end of each day, the little blue penguins make their way back to their burrows. And there's still good numbers of penguins coming in, maybe 50 to 60 a night. The peak of their breeding season is December, so they breed October through the end of March. And in December we see three to four hundred little penguins coming in every night. So they might have swum out here to uh, the eastern current that runs up the coast here. It's about 15 kilometres offshore and they would have spent four or five hours swimming around in that feeding. So they've swum 70 kilometres before they get back in here. And their legs are only about this size, so they come in and they have a bit of a rest first and then they walk up to where their nests are, feed their chicks. Might spend two or three hours on land, turn around, walk back out and swim back out to sea again, do it all again the next day. If you love wildlife, this is the place to be. 22 species inhabit the headland. Those little penguins, absolutely adorable. Did you get enough time on the Otago Peninsula? Oh, no, not by half. Goodness, I'd love to spend more time there. Uh, one place that was recommended to us that we didn't get to was Sandfly Bay, where you might see sea lions, but of course wild animals, so keep your distance, at least 50 metres. Yeah, and they're pretty big, aren't they? They are pretty big, so yeah, it, there's heaps more to do there. And it's a great time, isn't it, to fly to Dunedin because it's ID Fashion Week, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right, coming up starting this weekend. Um, a great place to stay if you are going down to ID Fashion Week is Aurora on George. Um, 
Um, have a look at this. The rooms are, have been completely revamped in the last year. They're slick and modern. It's four stars plus super comfortable bed. Uh, and I had the most amazing spa bath in my room as well. These hotel rooms, they wrap around this really lovely garden that makes the whole place feel really calm and really peaceful, even though it's a really handy distance to the CBD. A great place to stay, Aurora and George. That's really lovely and you can always do with a good spa yeah. treatment as well, a good spa in your room as well. Uh, there's some really great travel tips. Thank you so much, Debbie. No worries. And if you want to find out all you need to know about Dunedin's wildlife, urban escapes, family fun and heritage, you can go to dunedinnz.com forward slash visit.